Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in this video we are going to see how to use Charles Proxy for Flutter application. So what you have to do is first go to this charlesproxy.com and download the Charles. So if you're on macOS, download it for macOS. If you're on Windows, download for Windows. So I've already downloaded it and it is open right here and as soon as you download it, it will start proxying all your network calls. So anything which you do in your Safari or in your Google Chrome, you should be able to see it. What we'll see in this video is how to do Charles Proxy for a Flutter application. So let's say I have an application which is something like this. What it does is it just fetches a list of books from a API and this is how the application looks like. So fetch data example and all these are coming from an API. Okay, so I want to debug my application using Charles Proxy. So how can you debug your application? You can rewrite the response. You can rewrite the response code. You can rewrite the response what you're getting, whether it's a list, whether it's an empty list, whether you want to send some bad data or anything. So you can check your, you can check your UI, you can check your application for any type of response you can get from your server. So how do we do that? So what you have to do first in Charles Proxy, you have to go to help and in the SSL proxying, all you have to do is install Charles root certificate in iOS simulator. So just click on this and after clicking on this, you will get this pop-up saying the Charles Proxy root certificate has been added to your iOS simulator. You can now use Charles SSL proxying from the simulator. So click on OK and just to verify what you have to do is go to the settings and in the general in about section you can see certificate trust settings. So in this you should be able to see Charles proxy and it should be enabled. So if you see this screen it means the Charles proxy is all set for your iOS application. So if you're writing a native application then you don't have to do any further steps and for your application you should be able to see all the network calls listed in this Charles proxy section. But in case of Flutter what we have to do is we need to write some extra code to make it work. So what you have to do is go to your Visual Studio code and in the main dot dot we have to write some code to make it work. So I've already written it. So this is the code. I will give a link in the description. You can just copy it and paste it in your app as well. So just paste this, import this, and then we have this, this particular line. So we'll have to use it in our main dot dot, in our main function. So let's make it, put it inside. And I'll put this line over here. Okay, now your application is all set to be debugged with Charles Proxy. So let's just remove your application and restart it again because it would not work if you don't remove it and restart. So let's remove the app and restart it. And meanwhile, make sure that your Charles proxy is in recording mode because if it is not in recording mode you won't be able to see all these uh, network calls in this area and if you can notice we have this uh, locked icon it means we will be able to see some information but we won't be able to see all the information like request and response not everything regarding this so to make it work properly I will show you how to unlock it so let our application run first. Okay, so the application is running now. And as you can see, I have this link raw.githubusercontent.com. So this is my API call. So if you see in my application in fetchbooks.dot, this is my API. So this is the host of my API and this is the full link. You won't be able to see the full link as of now because we have not enabled the SSL proxying. So to enable the SSL proxying, just right click and click on enable SSL proxying. And now if you clear and just refresh your application, now if you see for this particular call, you will see this web icon instead of the lock icon. So now we will be able to see all the requests, response and everything. So if I 
open it, it will show me that this is the folder in my server and this is the book.json. Book so this is the complete path actually. So you can see the URL as well over here and then you can see the content. This is my response. You can see the summary, everything. So raw, headers, everything. So everything related to the API you can see over here, all the information. Now, what if you want to rewrite this API response? So you have already tested how your app works in case your API return 200 OK and you are getting proper response. But what if you want to test how your application will work if you get a 500 or 400 or some other error code? So this can be easily done with SSM proxying. So to do so, what you need to do is click on this books.json, click on tools. You might not be able to see tools option in the screen, but you should be able to see tools if you have Charles open. So go to tools, go to rewrite, and then what you need to do is enable rewrite. So if you have this disabled, click on this checkbox and make sure that it is enabled, and then click on add, and then name it something. So I will say books, API rewrite, books, I'll, I'll just say books. And then what you need to do is copy this URL and click on add over here and select HTTPS. So this is HTTPS. So we'll select HTTPS. Post, we'll just paste this whole URL and then take this much from here and put it in the path section. So this is our complete URL. So this is the protocol, this is the host, and this is the path section. Click on OK and your url is added and now you can add some action for this url so you can add over here so click on add and you will see this i'm not sure why it's not coming behind okay and what you have to do is click on types and say response status so let's say for response code 200 so when we are getting response code 200 from server we want to rewrite it to, we want to replace it with 500. So let's say when we get 200, replace it with 500. And that is it. That is all we have to do. So now when we refresh our application, even though from server we are getting 200 response, but due to our SSN Charles proxying, it will be converted to 500 response. And we will see how our application is behaving when we get 500 response so let's go to our vs code and refresh it and there you go we have an exception so let's run it again and okay so i'm simply showing the error in a text so i had just handled it like this so in case of error i just show the error in the text so that's why it is showing like this and you can see this bomb I can it means the API has written some error and it is it has not successfully run like it has not written 200 status code so this is how you do testing with Charles for Flutter application I hope you like this video if you like this please do not forget to subscribe and like and share this video thank you so much bye bye